Hi, Todd Sturzinger, CEO of Galveon, here at the Army's AUSA Annual Symposium in Washington, D.C. A lot of exciting things going on at Galveon to include some new awards we just received for U.S. DOD forces on our power and data systems equipment. As you know, power management and power distribution on the battlefield continues to be a challenge across all forces. Our systems are designed to scavenge power and to manage power to allow the soldier to extend their mission as far as they can. We just received an award from the Joint Program Executive Office for their CRBN units for our Max 8 Bulk Charger. Our Max 8 Bulk Charger is a system that can charge up to eight batteries of any kind, and it can scavenge power both from AC or DC or generator or even a cigarette lighter or even alligator clips to a, to a battery in a vehicle. So it allows bulk charging in an expeditionary forward deployed system as well as our squad power manager, which is a much smaller system that is for dismounted as well. Again, can, it can scavenge power, condition power, and charge multiple things, allowing the warfighter to extend their mission. Yeah, we also received a second award for the U.S. Marine Corps for our Soul Pack 2, which is on the power management side of our business. Of course, Galveon's very well known for our tactical head systems, which are helmets, which we have deployed over a million five helmets around the world. Um, but our power and data systems is becoming very well known as, as well. The U.S. Marine Corps just gave us an award for these solo packs, which gives them 140 hours of, of runtime versus a, a prior solo pack of 98 hours. So it really increases the ability for them to put this solo pack on their gear and get an extended mission. Um, so we're very proud of the fact that the U.S. Marine Corps chose this solo pack. So it fits into a nice mag pouch, so it fits very conformally to the body, and they basically plug right into this dongle here. They can charge whatever they, they need on their system, whether it's charging a radio or a central processing unit or a, their tactical Samsung phone. It basically, and we, we also have combiners so they can split and charge more than one thing at a time. So it's basically their power source in a dismounted application. This, this item can be recharged as well. You could actually hook this item up to our bulk charger, recharge it, you could hook it up to a scavenger we have and get uh, power from somewhere else and recharge this as well. When you add batteries to the warfighter, you're adding weight. You're adding the, the logistical tail of having to bring a lot of, of power sources to the battlefield. When you can get 140 hours off of one solo pack, you really have reduced that logistical footprint and the amount of items that the, the soldier has to carry in order to be powered on the battlefield. So the natural progression on the battlefield for the soldier is starting to, to allow the soldier to have more and more capability. Galveon is very well known for its protective helmets. We have over a million helmets installed around the world. I think we're up to 1.5 million. What we're trying to do is grow the capability on the helmet, which means getting compute on the back of the head and allowing the soldier to be connected to what's out in the battlefield and all the information available at all times. What's important about that is situational awareness. We want a soldier to be able to stay heads up at all times, not looking down at a computer, not having to look down at, at a tablet, this way, we can take this computer on the back of the helmet here and connect it to the Samsung phone or whatever it's EUD end user device they're carrying, take any information, whether it's navigational maps, uh, a feed from a UAV, anything that's coming over the tactical communication network, we can run it through our computer on the back of the head and then redisplay it on whatever they may have in front of their eyes. In this case, we have a, an occluded monocular display, but it can also be a night vision goggle with fused infrared. We've, we've interacted with multiple suppliers that have fused infrared goggle. It can also be a heads up display. Power is also very important because if you put computer on the back of a head, you're chewing up a lot of processing power. So being able to manage power, we're, we're basically taking the capabilities that we understand on expeditionary power and power management with our capability of being a head protecting device, the provider and combining all of that to now be able to manage data and power on the head. It is a real computer on the back of the helmet. So it's a processor much like you would find on your cell phone where we can have apps that run through the processor and those apps can display many things. It might be easier to show you the demonstration on the wall here. Another way to show this is through this demonstration. This was done for a special international customer, a special forces customer. 
It was a demonstration where we used the helmet that we showed you earlier with the compute on the back of the head. This is the frontal view. So you can see that we interacted with an advanced integrated head systems, let's call it a smart helmet, with the night vision goggles. We also had a laser threat warning system that was interacting with our, our compute. We also inter interacted with the digital uh, weapon scope, the smartwatch, a drone controller, and a, and a soldier launched drone, all in the same demonstration with that information coming to the soldier as needed. The soldier can define what they want the screen to look like. They can define the amount of information that they, they use or not use because you can get cognitive overload. So we want the soldier individually to be able to define what they see for, for various missions. We are doing low rate initial production for one customer for 25 systems that will be fielded starting in the first part of 2025. And then the other two customers are more developing the, the, the market for those customers. So I would see this is going to be scaled over time, but I think when you see 2026 or 2027, I think you're gonna see more and more of these systems being commonplace on the battlefield. Obviously, AUSA, the US military, the largest market in the world, spends the most money in the world. Making sure that we understand where the Army is going directionally, how we can influence some of this. Some of this is being adopted by special forces, which is a little bit ahead of the US Army but the U.S. Army is very interested in seeing where we're going with these type of systems to make sure that they can see technologically what's available for the warfighter.